The video you are about to watch is from an old woodworking magazine that I published during the years of 2003 to approximately 2006. This was a very unique magazine. It was purely video content and it was distributed on DVDs. The magazine ran for approximately three and a half years and then uh, due to financial concerns we simply had to terminate the magazine. We moved on to other things over the last roughly 15 years. However, there has been a request to resurrect this content, so I've gone through the trouble to get the equipment, the products, everything I needed in order to bring this content back to life to share with everyone. Here on this YouTube channel, we'll be putting up approximately 100 to 120 of the original stories that appeared in that magazine. The magazine was called Woodworking at Home Magazine, and it was truly one of a kind in the world. I really hope you enjoy these videos, and please tell your friends about them. Welcome to What is a Relief? I'm Dave Riley. For this issue, we're going to be carving a small leaf, a fairly generic style, uh, which I think you'll find interesting. This is the leaf that we're going to be carving today. This one happens to be in uh, basswood. You can carve it in any type of wood that you would be interested in. I do suggest, however, a wood with some grain. It makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, it's not a complicated project. In fact, it's a nice freeform project. Um, here's the, the backside for the undercutting. Um, being freeform, frankly, you can do no harm. Uh, it's going to be whatever size and shape that you want. This is not any particular species of leaf. Uh, it's just a representation. It makes a lovely piece to go on a table. Um, in fact, you can do it in different sizes. I have here, here's one a bit smaller, which was done in cherry wood. Um, it has nice grain uh, structure for it. And then you can go very, very small. This one made out of uh, mahogany, or uh, walnut rather, uh, with a pin on the back would make a very nice um, gift for someone. So now we can get started on this and we'll start with the design and the layout. Now I've mentioned in other issues the use of modeling clay to uh, lay out your project. Uh, I've done that in this, um, for this leaf. Uh, it's a very, very good way, a very useful way to um, develop your projects for a number of reasons. First of all, obviously when you're finished you will have a nice three-dimensional object as your model to carve from. Uh, another very good reason is that you can uh, be familiar with every detail of the carving or of the model. Since you have to do it, you have to do it all yourself. Uh, you have very, very great familiarity with your project. And then probably the, the, one of the best reasons is you can change it. If you don't like it, you can change the modeling. You can twist it, turn it, until you get the part exactly the way you want. You can also, in a very complicated carving, this one isn't very complicated, you can test your tools to see that you can reach all the areas. If you can't, this is the time to make a modification. Now here I have shown you the various stages of the carving. Uh, the first thing is the rough blank. You cut that out based on the pattern that we have supplied to you. After that is started, we do the general modeling to get the, the general form and the, the shape of the carving and define where the center of the carving is going to be. After we've done that, we go to the general modeling, getting all of the shape, the depth, where it's undercut for the edges, and all the rough modeling so that it will show uh, what the final is. Then we can, the next step is to go to the the final finishing to get all the, the tooling as you want. Uh, in this case, you may notice that part of it is sanded and part of it is still the tool. Your finish is entirely up to you. You can sand it. I prefer to sand this type of a project or with a nicely tooled surface, it can be just as attractive. The final step, which we will get to, is the final, the back cutting, the cutting back underneath. That's a bit more of a challenge and we'll cover that in the last section of this video. So now we can start the carving. Here is the, the uh, blank mounted on a plate, again with the newspaper as the uh, uh, gluing surface 
for easy removal. What we will be doing now is getting the general shape, just the rough shape, no detail yet, uh, of the part. Uh, this is very quick, very crude, uh, very simple work. I'm using a number three gouge for this roughing. This is just to get the, the general shape that we'll be dealing with. Now what I would do is I'm, I'm going to draw my center line so that I will know exactly where I want to put my uh, v-groove. I'm just using a fairly large V-tool just to define this center area. All right, the next phase we're going to do after we've done that preliminary roughing is to start and do the actual modeling and the shaping of the uh, carving. Before we do that, though, it's good to start and draw the outline so that you know where you're going to be going doing your cutting to. To do that, I'll just simply take the, the blank as I have it. I will hold up the, my model. This is another example of why the, having the model is such a good idea. Using an ordinary marking pen, I will just follow the lines. And this will be my cutting lines. Now we start the defining the center area and working things down to our full depth. As I'm doing this, I'm paying very close attention to my guidelines along the side so that I know exactly where I have to finish my cutting. As you can see, it's beginning to take shape now. Now we'll just start doing some more of the modeling to get these curves where they go down into the center of the carving. And I have my model at hand so that I can see and compare as I work along. Now on this carving, the, uh, it curves quite a lot so you're going to have to be very aware of the grain in the wood. Mahogany can get a little stringy. So you think you're with the grain and it's going to change very suddenly. So be very aware. Uh, mahogany carves beautifully across the grain. So if you're doing some shaping, as I'm doing right now, going across the grain is, is a pretty safe way to do it. It's when you start going with the grain, that it can give you some problems. So you have to be quite aware of all of this. Don't get too f ambitious and start taking very deep cuts. You may find out you're going to get into some trouble. And I'm working over the entire carving. Now that's, that's very important. Uh, it's a very easy to get involved with one particular curve. Oh, it's very interesting. Everything is going very well, but you could get a beautifully done curve and it may end up in the wrong place. So work over the entire carving, and this is true in, in many of your carvings. Don't get too involved in one area. You have to think of the entire carving, not just 
one little facet of it and then moving on to the next. So what it looks like I'm just jumping around sort of helter-skelter. I'm not. I'm working over the entire carving, bringing it all together at the same time. Now here I'm using a deeper gouge to start some of the undercutting where this bit of the leaf sort of over, folds over on itself. You don't want to wait until too late to get those started. And then I'll just come back and keep working my way down. Now that we have the pretty well roughed in, we have our shape. Now is the time to start and do the final detail, getting all of the surfaces and the uh, carving here nice and smooth and preparatory for the uh, sanding, which you will do before you take it off of your backboard. Now is the time you're going to have to pay close attention to how the grain goes. In this case, it, it turns right here, just about in the middle of the carving. It's going to take a nice sharp tool, make sure they're, you've stropped them, they've got the nice, good sharp edge. And start this tooling. Here I'm using a, a number three fishtail, which I particularly like. It's nice to get in here. It's it's small enough. It's only about a eight millimeter, maybe three eighths of an inch wide, and I can get a nicely tooled surface. Here in this area, we're going to do these deep curves. And if you notice how I skew the t the tool as I slide through the wood, it helps to get a nice smooth finish particularly if you're going to have to go across the grain as we are right here. But it's just a little, take a little at a time, work your way around, don't be in any hurry. Before you, as you start a cut, test it. Don't take a deep cut and then find out you're going into the grain or you're going to be tearing out. Take a light cut to get the feel of the wood. This is going to change every cut. It's going to be a little bit different. So this is where I'm trying to eliminate some of your frustrations. I'm not going to eliminate them all. And you just take your time. Sharp tools, sharp tools. There is no way you can do good work with dull tools. This may seem sacrilegious after all of the carving that you've done, now to attack it with coarse sandpaper. But you needed the carving to get the general shape that you need. Now we're going to just blend all the curves. Now the next step, now that we have completed the sanding, is to do this undercutting. This is the undercutting we're going to do as much of this area in here as we can while it is still on the board. Because once it comes off the board, it becomes much more of a challenge to do this work. So we'll start that aspect of it right now. And it just start coming in. Now it's just a matter of removing it from the board. Be gentle. And there she goes. There. It's a good idea to define where you are going to have the flat where it's going to sit on the table or for display. This is the area that you're not going to cut away. This requires a nice light touch and here I'm holding the tool more of as a pencil than the conventional way of holding the tool. 
This would be a place, if you had them, you could use the palm size tools because this is all very delicate work. Now that's going to complete the carving. The inside has been sanded. We have completed the undercutting in the back. I don't bother to sand the back. I like the tooled surface. One way to get a very nice, consistent tool surface is to use a um, fairly deep, this is a number seven gouge, and you can use it in your hand as you would a palm tool, and just a light cut, working your way all the way around to establish a nice even pattern. It leaves a nice workmanship-like quality to it. It doesn't look like you just undercut and then essentially abandoned it. And when you finish that, it's a matter now then of removing the uh, paper and glue, you can do that with a scraper, you can do it on a sander, you can just lay it on a sheet of coarse sandpaper and take that off and put your name and the date that you've carved it, add the finish of your choice, and you will have a very nice project. This has received just a first coat of a nice tongue oil finish. You can see how it brings out the grain. Uh, there will be subsequent coats to finish it, and then that will complete the project entirely. I hope you've enjoyed the project. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Riley for Woodworking at Home. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you truly enjoyed it, please help us share this information with the rest of the communities. Please hit the subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up, and be sure to tell your friends about this channel. Thanks again for watching.